Hello and welcome to Wondershare eDrawMax's YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be diving into UML component diagrams. We'll start by explaining what a UML component diagram is, what it's used for, and then we'll walk through creating an example together in eDrawMax. The tutorial assumes you have a basic understanding of UML, and if you're new to it, don't worry. Just click the subscribe button and head over to our playlist to check out more UML videos and get up to speed. Let's get started. In a component diagram, we visualize the structural relationships between the components in a system. In UML, components represent software objects grouped together to serve a common purpose. These components are autonomous, self-contained units within a system or subsystem, each offering one or more interfaces. They can easily be swapped or reused and interact with each other through these interfaces. So why are component diagrams so important? What can they help us do? Here are the three main benefits. First, they help you get a clear picture of the system's physical structure and how all the components fit together. You can see how the components relate to each other and interact within the system. And it allows you to focus on how services work and how they're made available through interfaces. So when should you draw a component diagram? Component diagrams help to divide systems into components and show their interrelationships. The breakdown of components into a lower level structure. These are two situations you should use it. Now, let's take a look at some common notations used in component diagrams. First, a component is a logical unit within the system, often a higher level abstraction than a class. It's represented as a rectangle with a smaller rectangle and tabs in the upper right-hand corner. There's provided interfaces as well. The provided interface defines the set of public attributes and operations that a component offers to other components. A required interface defines the set of public attributes and operations that a component needs from other components. And there's also dependencies. Dependencies between components are shown with dash arrows, indicating how one component relies on another. There's component assemblies as well. Components can be connected to form subsystems using a ball and socket joint notation to represent their interactions. And last but not least, we have ports. A port shows that the component doesn't directly provide the required interfaces. Instead, it delegates them to an internal class. So here's how you can create a component diagram in a few simple steps. Step one, define the purpose of your diagram. Step two, add the components, grouping them together when necessary. Step three, include other elements like classes, objects, and interfaces. And step four, show the dependencies between the components and other elements. Next, let's walk through an example demonstration to see how it works in practice. Drawing a UML component diagram. First, you can open eDraw Max and you can click on the home section here and select the more option right here. Then from there, what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose UML. So now I'm gonna click on the plus icon to open up the UML diagram. So this is a blank one. And if you don't wanna use the given templates, this is what you're gonna use. So the UML component diagram library has most of the symbols related to components diagrams that can be found over here. As you can see on the left-hand side, there's a bunch of these different symbols here. You can drag and drop the component symbols on the drawing pane and adjust accordingly and provide the name for your requirements. As you can see in any of these situations, you can drag these on here with all those different states that you I referenced earlier in the video. So let's just get a couple over here on the screen. So you can put like component storefront, another component catalog, and then another component for like order system. And I'm gonna add the text outside of the brackets here. Okay, then I can put a subsystem for an online store as well, resize these to my liking, and then I can add any of the relevant relationship symbols as well. To add different text, you can go to the text section at the top of the screen here and add it very easily. And what you can do is you can click on shape as well, and you can make adjustments to the style however you'd like. So you could select multiple of these as well at the same time to make changes to the shape style. So I can add this nice blue to multiple them at once if I'd like. And you can press right click and select all the connectors too in order to change that style as well to whatever you want. So I wanted to make it a nice color specifically like this purple here or blue, whatever you want. 
Then you can go into the design tab and select fit to drawing and it'll make this nice update. So this entire diagram is set to the size of the drawing. And then under the view tab, you can uncheck the grid lines to clean that up too. And if you don't wanna use these different options, you could also look up some of the UML diagrams that exist in Wondershare. So we have some UML ones we could look up in the template library online, like UML, and then we can go to here and look up any ones we want, like this insurance sequence diagram. And there are a bunch of other ones inside of here as well, like a car rental system UML diagram too. Definitely recommend checking out all their templates whenever you get the chance. Thanks for watching this tutorial on UML component diagrams. Please subscribe to our channel to watch more helpful tutorials and leave a comment if you have any thoughts or questions. Lastly, click on the link in the comment down below to create a free eDrawMax account and start making your own diagrams today. Catch you in the next one.